This morning's farm report is sponsored by LS Tractor. Start blue, stay blue. This year, make LS Tractor your all season workhorse. From spring applications using LS tillers, box blades, rotary cutters, and grapples, to winter applications utilizing LS snow blowers, blades, and brooms. With this lineup, there's no job you can't do with LS Tractors and implements. Learn more at lstractorusa.com or check out your local LS dealer. Well, good morning, folks, and happy 4th of July once more. Uh, this is a 4th of July freedom patriotic theme today and uh, I'd like to add my contribution to it as well. America and the, the Americans, uh, that's you and me, uh, have always had the reputation of being very generous and trying to reach out to the needs of our fellow man. And I have a story now that reflects that. Actually, it's a, an editorial from the 1970s that was uh, done by one of our neighbors in Canada. Uh, this is how it goes. It's a salute to the Americans. On June the 5th, 1973, during his broadcast over CFRB Toronto, Mr. Gordon Sinclair, one of Canada's most respected broadcasters, had some thoughts concerning his American neighbors. These are his words. The United States dollar has taken another pounding on German, French, and British exchanges, reaching the lowest point ever known in West Germany. It has declined there 41% since 1971, and this Canadian thinks it's time to speak up for the Americans as the most generous and perhaps the least appreciated people in all the earth. More than 60 years ago, when I first started to read newspapers, I read of floods on the Yellow River and the Yangtzees. Who rushed in with men and money to hell? Why, the Americans did, that's who. They've helped control floods on the Nile, the Amazon, the Ganges, and the Niger. Today, the rich bottomland of the Mississippi is underwater, and no foreign land has sent a dollar to help. Germany, Japan, and to a lesser extent, Britain and Italy were pulled out of the debris of war by the Americans, who poured in billions of dollars and forgave other billions in debts. Not one of those countries is today paying even the interest on its remaining debts to the United States. When the franc was in danger of collapse in 1956, it was the Americans who propped it up, and their reward was to be insulted and swindled on the streets of Paris. I was there, I saw it. When distant cities are hit by earthquakes, it's the United States that hurries in to help them. Managua, Nicaragua is one of the most recent examples. So far this spring, 49 American communities have been flattened by tornadoes. Nobody has helped. The Marshall Plan, the Truman Policy, all pump billions upon billions of dollars into discouraged countries, and now newspapers in those countries are writing about the decadent warmongering Americans. I'd like to see just one of those countries that's gloating over the erosion of the United States dollar build its own airplane. Now, come on, let's hear it. Does any other country on Earth have a plane to equal the Boeing Jumbo Jet, the Lockheed TriStar, or the Douglas 10? If so, why don't they fly them? Why do all international lines except Russia fly American planes? And why does no other country on Earth even attempt to put a man or a woman on the moon? You talk about Japanese technocracy, and you get radios. You talk about German technocracy, and you get automobiles. You talk about American technocracy, and you find men on the moon not once, but several times, and safely home again. You talk about scandals, and the Americans put theirs right in the store window for everybody to look at. Even their draft dodgers aren't hounded or pursued. 
They're right here on our streets in Toronto. And unless they're breaking Canadian laws, most of them are receiving American dollars from mom and dad back home to spend here in Canada. When the Americans get out of this bind, as they will, who could blame them if they said to heck with the rest of the world? Let someone else build and repair foreign dams and design foreign buildings that won't shake apart in earthquakes. When the railways of France, Germany, and India were breaking down through age, it was the Americans who rebuilt them. When the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central went broke, nobody loaned them an old caboose. Both are still broke. I can name you 5,000 times when someone else came to the help of, when the Americans came to the help of someone else when they were in trouble. Can you name me even one time when someone else came to the help of the Americans when they were in trouble. I don't think there was outside help even during the San Francisco earthquake. Our neighbors have faced it alone. And I'm one Canadian who's tired of hearing them kicked around. They will come out of this thing with their flag high, and when they do, they're entitled to thumb their noses at the lands that are gloating over their present troubles. I hope Canada isn't one of these. And another thing, the American Red Cross was told recently at its 48th annual meeting in New Orleans that it was broke. This year's disasters with the year less than half over has taken it all. And nobody but nobody has helped. Uh, that editorial goes back to the early 70s when inflation was high, when gas lines were uh, evident everywhere, uh, when unemployment was uh, rampant and uh, we were going through a growth cycle. And uh, Mr. Gordon Sinclair of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation wrote that editorial and the uh, impact of it was so great it went all the way around the world and back again and uh, continues uh, to be referred to, to today. In times of war, uh, the American flag has always been uh, a symbol of freedom, and I hope and pray that that will always be the case. But oftentimes the truth is stranger than fiction. And here's a story from out of the annals of World War II that goes like this. It was during the North African campaign, a large group of soldier boys had been on the march for many days. Upon successfully completing their mission, they arrived safely in the little town of Casino, Italy. The next day being Sunday, the sergeant, being a very devout man, suggested to the soldiers they go to the chapel and offer thanks to the Lord God Almighty for the success of the mission and for their safety and well-being. When the men arrived at the chapel, all of the men had their Bibles, that is, except one soldier, who being the youngest of the group, spread out a deck of cards. The sergeant seeing the cards reprimanded the soldier, saying, Soldier, put away those cards. For this infraction you will face the most severe consequences ever so ordered by the provost marshal. When the service was over, the soldier was taken captive and carried to the office of the provost marshal. Upon arriving, the provost marshal said, Who brings this man here? I do, sir, the sergeant replied. And for what reasons? for playing cards in church, sir. And what do you have to say for yourself, son? Much, sir, the young soldier replied. You see, sir, I had been on the march for many days, and I had neither Bible nor prayer book to give me divine consolation and spiritual guidance. If you will allow me, I feel I can justify the purity of my intentions. And with that, the young soldier started his story. You see, sir, when I see an ace, it reminds me there is but one God. And the deuce reminds me that the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old and the New Testaments. When I see the tray, I'm reminded of the three parts that make up the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When I see the four, I'm reminded of the four evangelists who preached the gospel. That was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I see a five, I'm reminded of the parable our Savior told, that is, of the five wise maidens who trimmed their lamps. There were ten of them, five were wise and were saved, while five were foolish and were shut out. When I see the six, I'm reminded that in six days God created heaven and earth. The seven reminds me that on the seventh day, he rested from his chore and called it holy. 
When I see an eight, I'm reminded of the eight righteous persons God saved when he destroyed the earth. There was Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their wives. When I see the nine, I'm reminded of the lepers our Savior cleansed, and nine out of ten didn't even thank him. When I see the ten, I'm reminded of the Ten Commandments God handed down to Moses on a tablet of stone. When I see the king, I'm reminded there is but one king of heaven, God Almighty, and the queen is the blessed Virgin Mary, who is queen of heaven, and the jack or the knave, the devil. When I count the number of spots on a deck of cards, I find 365, the number of days in a year. There are 52 cards, the number of weeks in a year. There are 12 picture cards, the number of months in a year. There are four suits, the number of weeks in a month. And there are 13 tricks, the number of weeks in a quarter. So you see, sir, my deck of cards not only serves me as a Bible, but an almanac and calendar as well. Now, folks, the truth of this story is questionable. Really, it's very legendary. But it proves a very vital point, and that being that mankind can find divine inspiration anywhere he looks in this entire world, in things big and small, in the significant and not so significant, even to the extent of finding it in something as worldly and common as a lowly deck of cards. And that, my friends, is the story of the soldier's deck of cards. In recent years, uh, at celebrations such as this, uh, celebrations you see on television uh, that the networks put on. Uh, Johnny Cash had the uh, inspiration to write a very lovely tribute to the flag. And this tribute is actually a history of our nation from the perspective of the flag. And uh, it's simply called the Ragged Old Flag. I walked through a county courthouse square. On a park bench, an old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, it'll do for our little town. And I said, your flagpole there is leaning a little bit. And that's a ragged old flag you've got hanging on it. He said, have a seat. And I sat down. Is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, we don't like to brag, but we're mighty proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware, and it got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key sat watching it writing, oh say can you see. She got a bad rip down in New Orleans with Packenham and Jackson a-tugging at her seams, and she almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but she waved on low. She got cut with a sword at Chancellorsville, and she got cut again at Shallow Hill. With Robert E. Lee, Beauregard, and Bragg, the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flandersville in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and low before that one was through. She's been to Korea, Vietnam. She went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waves from our ships upon the briny foam. Now she doesn't get the respect that she's due here at home. In her own good land, she's had nothing but abuse. She's been burned, disowned, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is scandalized throughout the land. She's getting threadbare and wearing thin, but she's in mighty good shape for the shape she's in. She's been through the fire before, and I think she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning, take her down every night, make sure she doesn't touch the ground, and fold her up just right. On second thoughts, we do like to brag. We are mighty proud of that ragged old flag. Ladies and gentlemen, that uh, includes all my time for this morning. I wish you a lovely, wonderful day. And we must uh, remind ourselves that uh, freedom isn't necessarily free. And therefore, we celebrate today in gratitude to our nation, to our veterans, to uh, all the good things that make America so wonderful. Uh, have a good day. And in a few moments, uh, this show will resume with the uh, very illustrious General Arnold Gordon Bray. Thank you so much.